Hello. Welcome, 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 and welcome to our lovely new members. Now, if I race down here to Nanny and Christine, welcome. And um, my name's B, those of you who are the gang will know, and um, this is my kitchen, and I love to teach people to cook, and I specialise in paleo keto cooking for um, health and longevity, and energy and all those lovely things. And um, you can work with me in three ways, which you can find out on my website, but through my Paleo Keto Party Lives, I think, which I do enjoy. Also my online courses and my one-to-ones, which I, which I absolutely adore too. So more about that all on my website, which you can read out more. But anyway, here I am live. Now, I snuck up to Norfolk for two weeks and I so planned that you would have lovely slots um, each Saturday when I was away. And you know, you know, it didn't go according to plan, but hey, my love was with you. I tried and technology will improve and here I am. But I just can't tell you how lovely it is to be back in my, in my kitchen, uh, which didn't mean to say that I didn't have a nice time when I was away, but I do find that sometimes things can happen that kind of spiral me off the planet. And, and one of the things is, is organisation and I like perfection. So I've really worked hard to work with my new platform and the people that help me to make sure it happens. And I just didn't get something right. And do you know what? Life's too short. But this weekend, um, isn't it lovely? It's, it's Mothering Sunday tomorrow. And so, you know, I've taken things into my own hands a bit. Um, and I wonder if you can relate to this too, because I have three gorgeous adult children. And um, I can remember in my 20s, um, going, oh, mm, I have forgotten to ring mum on um, Mothering Sunday. And you just kind of block it out because that's not where your life is. And in your 20s, your lives are so busy and so exciting and changing with new people, new jobs, new careers, new moving house. I've got something to say, look, I'm, gonna, I'm so keen to say hello to you guys when you come on. And I'm just going to see if I can get you up on my laptop so I can see who's joining in. Um, so Kirsty, oh Kirsty, hello, <laughs> um, good morning to you. Well, cheers. This is my lovely coffee. I've stolen my husband's coffee actually, and I'm going to put in some um, MCT oil. God, I can't even remember. Let's have an extra splash because that's why we put MCT oil on because it helps our brain and also it's a little useful tool if you're trying to extend um, your um, fasting window, if that's something you're playing with, which I thoroughly recommend. Um, but anyway, back to Mothering Sunday and um, kids feeling awkward and full of guilt and I have this thing. And I don't want that for my kids at all. However, last year, none of them contacted me in any shape or form. I can't remember the sign. I don't think, I can't remember if anyone was living here or not at the time. I can't remember. But, you know, let's face it. Mothering Sunday is a huge Christian um, um, day. It's never going away. It's a huge marketing campaign. It's in all our diaries automatically, etc., etc. So you know, if you're a mum and nobody says anything on your um, on Mothering Sunday, you know, you you're just going to feel sad, aren't you? So how to get round that? Well, I've been into my garden and I have picked flowers. Um, and they're gorgeous. I did the same for my mum yesterday and I know she loves gardens so I picked a load and I thought well I'll keep one bunch for me and whatever and then I thought no I'm going to take the whole lot because I can go in my garden this morning and pick more for me. So I am really lucky to have this amazing garden and I've got daffodils and giant snowdrops and hellebores and I can't think what this is but it's fragrant. But anyway so that is part one and then part two is going to come a bit later because I went to the butcher this morning especially so I could prepare something that meant I didn't have to cook tomorrow and everything would be done and it would all be lovely. And then also it would cater for anybody who might suddenly appear for surprise, because that sometimes happens too, doesn't it, on special occasions. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna pass that on to you. Um, so that is, that is Mothering Sunday. I mean, I'll tell you what I did yesterday. I, I just woke up in the morning and I thought I've got to deal with this because, because I want to teach my kids how to, they need to understand and they need to log it, you know, the two way thing here. So I basically sent an email saying, this is what it is this weekend. I'm going to feel terrible if the same thing happened last year. 
just need you to know, I can't even remember what I wrote. I, I think I was, I, was, I was to the point, but I did something that I learned in my al -Anon years, um, and that was speaking my truth. So if you've got something that's really important you want to say, think about it, make it concise, and at the right moment you say it, and then that's it, over, you move on. And so that's it, over, I, they've got the information, whatever happens, I don't mind. I don't want them to feel guilty at all. I want us to have a fabulous relationship and I want to also feel happy on Mothering Sunday knowing that there's lots of love in the air and I will go to church and I will get my own posy. I mean, it's lovely when the kids are little and you do go, you're a church goer and they go up to the front and they bring you all posies. Isn't that lovely? But you know, that time comes to an end. <laughs> and, and so I go and get my own now and I get one for my mum. So, you know, but look at this, this is bigger. This is my posy. I mean, look at that. It's a little bit, that's bigger than any posy. So I am very, very fortunate lady. Right, so that's so that is that. Now, um, three things this morning, and as always, lots, lots to to tell you about. What I mean, I've not been here for three weeks, so so um, so lots to say. But let's get cooking, and uh, you know, I'm turning round immediately. Let's do this. So I went to my fridge, and this morning, and I was rummaging with the vegetables. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I have a. A green thing, good old Lakeland, um, in the bottom of it, but actually that's still wet. And it was all just looking terrible. So I thought, do it, just do it. You know, if you see something, just do it. So I cleaned it out, and that's just going to be dry now. And so I've got, it was, it was the veg tray. So all the veg are waiting here to go back in. And um, after I've finished, that will be dry, so that can, that can go back in. But, so, so as I say, that is, you know, something for you to keep on. I talked a few weeks ago about clearing out your freezer. I wonder if has anybody done that? Because I did. I think I posted a photo of it. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'll post it again today. Just to remind you that we do have to do these things. And I made a big kind of veggie stew this week, which was really useful. Um, lots of different things going on, but I started clearing out my freezer because, you know, I've got my allotment and I've got the veg garden and I've been working in those. So I know we're a way off produce coming out of them, but I have got some spinach and kale that's going kind of over. And, you know, we need to clear out the, um, the produce from last year and use it. And I grew up with a mum who's amazing at um, gardening and produce. And, you know, there were, you know, there were white, white red currants from 1973. I mean, that's probably a slight exaggeration, but you get my tricks. Right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm making this, and we're going to have this for supper tonight, is um, cauliflower puree. So, you know, I'm all into brassicas. Um, when I went away, I, I found it difficult. We had, it was a really challenge, it was, it was lovely, but it was a really challenging week in, for my, my parents-in-law came to stay, and my husband, because, because my husband's uncle died yesterday, oh, oh no, on th Thursday, and from pancreatic cancer. So the cancer side will always touch my heart massively. And, you know, it's just a sadness. So we were, we were looking after Mark's parents and we had a lovely week, but, you know, food goes awry. Uh, well, it doesn't go awry. We always eat amazing food, but just not my kind of food. And you know, paleo keto type of food, which makes me feel amazing and gives me energy and keeps my brain clear. But, you know, so I'm just getting back to that. And thank you, Riverford. They did my delivery on Thursday and all these lovely appropriate things came into my house again, not least a gorgeous cauliflower. And there are so many things I love to do with a cauliflower. But I'm just cutting off the base there. And um, well, I'm just, I thought, let's make some cauliflower mash tonight, some cauliflower puree, which will be like mash um, and everybody will enjoy it. <clears throat> so what I'm just going to do here is just cut through the core, so when you make a mash, you can use the core because, you know, that is just really delicious. And we, I'm just gonna steam it. I think I'm gonna have lots of things going on there. So I'll, I'll put it over on this side, which means you probably won't see it too much, but it's only cauliflower, guys. <coughs> so I'll pop it in here. So it's really lovely things, just thinking of, different ways you can do your veg. We do just get stuck in our routines, don't we? So, you know, um, what can I think of? So I had the most gorgeous conversation with one of my oldest friends, Mandy in Sydney, Australia. So Mandy, if you watch this, 
I loved our conversation. You know, you know my whole history. You know about me. We've had quite a lot of gaps between us in the last few years because lives are so busy and stuff happens and we have family stuff to deal with and that's just been challenging. Um, you know, there's a gang of four of us and that's been really challenging for everybody. So um, it was so nice to catch up with you. So thank you for that. But um, uh, Mandy, for those of you, Mandy, um, so a while ago, um, we had a conversation. This is quite a few years ago. I was on my health, health kick well, you know, plan to, to feel great. And so I was on the roll, it was before I think I'd done my nutrition program. And um, Mandy's a brilliant, she has a brilliant business called The Word Garden. If you need scripts, she's amazing. Um, and she told me she just created a cookbook for Nutella. And I went, oh my goodness. Is that how you have to earn your money? You're never going to make it if you're making cookbooks for Nutella. Anyway, Mandy, now, before I carry on, look, I've got some almond milk here and I have got the most amazing olive oil I'm going to tell you about. I have found a supply of amazing olive oil, a very small supply, but anyway. Um, that is what I'm going to have to hand to go into the cauliflower puree later on. So, Mandy has, um, over in Australia, the um, health service is amazing. So, she has a GP who's also a functional nutritionist. Isn't that amazing? And she gets some half an hour appointments. She's always told me about how incredible the health services over there. And um, because they have time. And that is a big thing when you're having a consultation with somebody. So she's now been, for, she said for eight months she has been, she's lost 20 kilos. And she has been on the motion. She said, she had just come back from a walk and she'd been out with the earphones on and the dog. And she showed me, she'd look at this, look at this. She got so excited. A bowl, she's my breakfast soup. And it was full, she said, look at this, and it's got, and it had, you know, at least 10 different things in it, and a bit of bean, a few beans, and, and she, and it was, it was so lovely to hear her joy, and she's been reading all the amazing books on longevity, and Feel Better Live More, and um, I think Mel Robbins, and she's even dived into Minty Pelts, and, and it was just so lovely to see somebody who's on the journey, engaged and on the journey, and feeling great, and just aiming to live for a hundred and you know she's thrown all of those contracts she had she's not working with anybody in ultra refined food anymore Nutella is the thing of the past so if you've got a jar of Nutella get it out get it out that is the only way guys go to your cupboards and get it rid of it and then you can't have it you know I found myself eating a piece of processed carrot cake last week and it had gluten in it I mean this is what happens when you're having a low moment and you're tired and you're going to be tired if you're eating the wrong food and I was like what thank goodness that has gone right so cauliflower is on when it comes to the boil you just need the cauliflower to be soft and then we're going to plonk it in the food processor okay so that's job number one now job number two Let's go back to um, um, this whole thing about variety for the microbiome. And we are going to do, that's the royal bee, a rabbit ragu. Now, uh, my husband, there's a noise going on there. Oh, that's just the, uh, my husband came back from um, the butcher the other day with the rabbit. I mean, I was delighted because, you know, I'd go and buy pig's heads and this kind of stuff. Um, but, um, so I was absolutely thrilled that he did because he, I think he'd remembered that I had made um, a rabbit ragu and actually hair ragu um, earlier on, or last year when I was going off and doing all the game and country fairs. And of course, game is cheap, is cheap. Um, it's available now. Our local butcher's got rabbits, spring rabbits. Um, I don't know whether they're more just available at this time yet. I don't know whether they're hopping around the fields a bit more. I don't know about that, but, um, you know, isn't that great? It's another type of meat and it's lean and we can add the good fats into it. So I wanted to teach you how to make a nice ragu. And um, one of the things that um, when I was thinking about, so I'm getting a pee out there. When I was thinking about um, what I was going to do this morning and um, I just came back to um, the lovely, the, the wonderful workshops I had with a, a client, um, in January and um, I went three times and the third time I went I was so excited because I was really pressing her to practice these chopping skills and using this big knife and the third time I went 
Um, she said, I've got it. She said, I've got it. And so you know, I just want everybody to understand about the, the power of being able to manage a large knife. And she said, I've got it. Because I was talking very much about, the, you know, when you, when you um, are doing things like casseroles and things like that, um, in any cooking, it's not having the vegetables in a uniform shape. It's not just about being aesthetically pleasing. Uh, by the way, carrots, that was a large, lovely carrot. And I see we have so much celery in the fridge. So we're going to be celery overload here. Um, so she started, because when you have evenly cut pieces of vegetable, they cook evenly and they brown evenly. So there's all sorts of it. And then they look nice at the end result. So, you know, there is great method to, and reason behind all these classic ways of cooking. So if you need to learn these skills, then just go to my website. <gasps> and, oh my goodness, I have been just getting so excited. I had, I, think, I don't know if any of you have my, my weekly B scoop. I write a newsletter now. It's just, I've just, I think, probably done my fourth one. And it's take, I wanted to do this for so long. And you just, it's my kind of like explosion on paper. And then you get my explosion in real life on Saturday morning. Um, but, um, oh gosh, I already forgot what I was saying. Um, oh yes, 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 yes. So when I was away, by the way, I've got a bit sad. I can only find the one red onion and one tiny regular onion. But just so you know that cooking onions or cut onions um, to use for casseroles and things like that should really be the, the white brown for golden onions because red onions are lovely, but they're more for roasting and pretty salads and things like that because the colour goes greyish when you cook them and they don't have such good strength of flavour for these long, slow-cooked things. But, yes, what I was saying in my bee scoop was, right, before I do that, let us just get a pan on the go. Um, my lovely, lovely 30 centimetre wide sauté pan. So sauté pans are ones with a straight shallow but straight side. This is such a versatile pan. If you are cooking for a family of four, or five or six or seven, and even just for the two of us, because so I quite often like making larger quantities because then I've got freezer food for batch cooking. You know, this is one of the most valuable pieces of kit. So Google it, get one. Um, so I'm just gonna put that on there. And then I've got some olive oil. So I'm gonna put some, you know, I've just, I've just done a big splash of olive oil because I don't only do big splashes. Um, and I'm going to put the onion, carrot and celery in there and that is going to, um, that is going to brown and it's going to take a while. So it'll probably carry on after I've finished um, at half past because it'd be nice if I finished at half past and I can show you the, the photos later. But um, that's going to, those vegetables are going to nicely brown. I'll take photos so you'll see it. Oh, I think I should breathe and have a... Quick I'm going to just dive on, and I, the other, you know, I, gosh, this is such a kind of like explosion of, of everything, it's too long for me to not speak to you for three weeks, <laughs> oh dear, oh you've got Anne Gould, lovely, Anne Gould, hello, good morning, so I'm thinking about doing this at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning, so you guys, tell me your feedback, because I'm thinking that um, if I do it at 8 o'clock, then actually anybody can catch up with it through a Saturday morning, and it gives everyone flexibility. Also, it means that my daughter, who's probably going to be living here for quite a long time, because she kind of comes down at, at this kind of time, and that's a bit mean, isn't it? You know, this is her home as well, and I want to see her in the kitchen and be cosy with her and let her cuddle the dog and all this kind of stuff, and I don't want to frighten her off. So that is, so feedback will be really, really good. Right, I can hear sizzling in the background. So, just giving that just a nice stir. And that will just, as I say, that will take about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes for those veg to really brown. And I've got then, I've got some garlic, loads of garlic. Garlic is really important. Of course, garlic's important. Garlic for everything. So I've got some garlic that will go in, and I've got 
some thyme um, and bay leaves. So those are your basic flavourings. But what, 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 so a ragu is such a simple thing to make. You can, it, it's a process that you can apply to all meats. And you hear about hair ragu with papadella. You can do it with venison ragu. It goes with papadella, that wide pasta. Now, um, okay, paleo keto, we don't do pasta. Um, if there's an exception to the rule, I can make you use buckwheat pasta because that's high in protein. Okay, so that's, that's an option for you. Or we go down the vegetable papadella, which is lovely. So you can make amazing papadella with carrots, big carrots. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So look at these lovely big carrots. And courgettes. And I'm going to do that tonight. So actually, it's an old carrot here, so I'm just going to peel it. If you want to learn how to speed peel carrots, well, just, I'm sure you can slow this down, perhaps. I know, Anne, you're a whiz on all these things, so you can slow it down. But look, you want one of these wide, D-shaped peelers. Can you see that? I'll just come, I'll go come a bit closer. They're the sander ones. There you go. There you go, guys. Um, and you just, you just keep peeling. And you, you can put your carrot down, and as you just keep peeling on one side, you end up with these lovely, large ribbons. Look at that. So, you know, there's always a way around making the good old papadella. It does not have to be the traditional one. And, you know, I have not been on the game with my ketones for the last few weeks. I've noticed it in energy, and it's because I haven't got the kit in the house, and I haven't got the kit in the house, because I tried to get myself a keto meter, and then, just having a little stir here, um, and then um, I ordered one, but it wasn't accurate enough, it was, only, it was about 40 quid, 45 quid or something, and it just had um, different coloured lights, and I wanted a more precise measurement, because I like things to be precise. But actually, probably, that would have been better than nothing. Um, but I sent it back, and then I thought about getting more test strips in, and I didn't do that because they're quite expensive, and I know that's not Dr. Sarah Myhill's way. And then I just it, and then I just like, oh, this is all too much, I'm just going to have a break. So I've had a break, and I'm now, I've had a week back at home, and I'm back in routine. It's taken a week. Yes, I ate that bit of cake the other day, but it's gone. And I'm delighted it didn't have too much of an effect. So obviously it improved the health of my gut. That's very nice coffee. Uh, um, so we've got browning veggies over there. So the veggies are going to brown. And then we've got, I've got some smoked bacon. That's going to brown too. In fact, so smoked streaky bacon or, um, you know, lardons. Lovely smoked lardons. Those will work too. He asked me, how many do you want? My comment to that is, I'd just like a watch, please. I, you know, I cannot be doing with this precision. Precision messes with my head. Does it mess with anybody else's head? I mean, I like, I love to be organised, but, you know, um, I think, I'm, I mean, I'm seeing it more now. I, I, um, I very much see myself as a, uh, an ADHD person. I think it has superpowers. I mean, I think of all the things that I've done in my life, if I hadn't had that drive and that power and that energy that comes from goodness knows where, amazing. There are so many things I wouldn't have done, but I do know that I need to have parameters in my life to help me through. It's really funny, well, it's not really funny, but to, to now see that this is all part of an ADHD picture. So, um, you know, the fact that my veg box got delivered yesterday, I don't have to think it. But it's automatic, that comes. The fish monkey comes on the money. I don't have to live back. He comes, and I'm like, I will eat fish every week. You know, I go to the butcher and then I just stand there. It's such a good butcher. Conisby is in the whole thing. It's such a good butcher. I go to the main one at Park Corner and I just stand there and my eyes go. I'm like, I bought venison shanks today and venison mince and I bought shoulder pork and I just I buy a whole selection and then I have it in the freezer and gluten free sausages and I have it. I have it so I don't have to think, but I always know that I'm going to get the right things. I can feel this is going to go on today, so you might want to play back. Um, and I'm, 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 um, I'm going to let it go on today because I've been away for a couple of weeks and I missed you all. And I want, want to just 
let, let off steam. And now my nose needs to go. Right. I will show you those veggies in a moment because they are browning. And I will wash my hands because I've got my nose. Um, and let's have a look at the cauliflower. So it's so good. You know, I had a great cooking session this morning and then I kind of sorted for tonight and the weekend. Today is a garden day. Right. When you're testing veg, I'll come out at the side of the steam. Always use a table knife, a blood knife to go because um, otherwise, yeah, that's perfect. Otherwise, you will get um, a wrong emotion. Just to work. Right, that is great. So, cauliflower can just sit there for a moment. I'll turn that off and let's have a little look at what's going on here. And you guys can't see what's going on on my alga, but my alga is so lovely. Look, there we go. So, um, um, that's all browning nicely. Just, um, do be careful, because if you have it on too high heat, you'll find it burning, okay? Now, in an ideal world, you put the celery in first, because that has the least sugar in it, and that you start that browning, and then you can go the onions and carrots. Have a higher sugar content. I'm looking here just at a minute and I'm just going to pass it on. Today is um, today is um, veg I've got this weekend. It's all about next stage of seeds and um, planting things, things and uh, garlic. So when I was at our amazing butcher in Norfolk, he had some giant garlic bulbs and my lovely friend up there, Ginny Wesley, said you must um, grow the giant garlic. So I could see they were sprouting, so I bought those. And you know, growing garlic is so easy. You literally get um, a thing of garlic, a clove of garlic, and stick it in the soil and go away. I mean, that's it. And in fact, um, on the last, these are all like organic cloves, the last clove of garlic I had, they were all shooting anyway. So I'm going to put this in. So we're going to get loads of garlic growing. And then I always also thought it was a bit cheating with this whole thing, because if you grow a seed, you really feel like you've growing something properly. And onions, I think they call them onion sets, I've never done them, but you basically get a packet of baby onions and you stick them all and they grow into, oh, and you stick them in the soil and they grow into big onions. And I mean, I feel that's cheating, but hey, that's what you do. And I've never done it before, so I'm going to do it. Oh, I've got all my other seeds there. So we'll come back to that. Right, how is this doing? Now it is, So I'm moving it over to one, that one side here. But let us look at the rabbit. Let us look at the rabbit. So I need to open it up. And um, probably a whole rabbit. So we'll have legs and arms and saddle. A bit down the back. Two sort of bits here. Thighs there. And a bit up the back. So rabbit is lean. So you need to cook with fat, which is why it's so good to use some nice streaky smoky bacon. Cook it with dripping, nice olive oil. There we go. Then we've got a haunch, so the back legs. That's the, what's that? That's a bit of the saddle. That's the other bit of the saddle. So we've got front legs. There we go. And we've got, hmm, a sort of, maybe that's a bit of the end there. Can't make, anyway. That is rabbit. Rabbit for you. Um, So with this meat, you know, if I, when I'm doing a typical ragu, then I actually cut it all up into small bits. I want to take it off the, excuse me, I'm coming around here. I'll just show you that, all those different pieces there. Um, I would um, take it off the bone, but I'm not because it's Saturday morning here. So I'm going to get another saucepan and I'm going to start frying that. So let me get that all organized. Fry that to brown it, so I'll get that heated up. Now this is a key thing that I want to do. What I'm going to do is get some flour. Now for me, that is gluten-free flour. You really don't need very much at all, but I'm going to put a spoon in there. And this is going to help just create um, a little bit of syrupy sauce. So I'm just going to put you know, a dessert spoon in there, in with that veg, and I'm going to 
cook it, stirring it until it browns, okay? And that is going to give just a little bit more a little bit of sort of syrupy consistency to the sauce. And by browning it, it's going to add flavour and colour to the sauce, which is really important. And then I have got, sitting on the back of the arbor here, I've got some um, chicken stock and actually turkey stock left over from Christmas. So again, emptying the freezer down, and that is what is going to cook in long and slow. And when the rabbit is really lovely and tender, then I can reduce the sauce down and we'll have this amazing, amazing ragu. So, just getting that flour stirred in there and stirred around. So again, keep the heat a little bit lower so you don't burn it. And uh, what am I looking at? Um, yeah, I'm gonna, well, we'll come off that. No, let's use it now, actually. At this amazing Creek Abbey Mills market up in Norfolk, I came across this lovely stuff called can, cannellina oil. I'd never come across it. Rich in plant-based maybe. So it's a local farm on Norfolk Broads. I need to look up the. It wasn't uh, look up the oil. It wasn't something that came um, came into my radar when I was trained as a nutrition therapist. So that's why I'm intrigued. But it was a lovely couple, and it's cold pressed, and you can heat it to high temperatures, and it's got a pretty mild flavour. But it's a nice kind of. Well, earthy is the wrong word. It's nice, and it's definitely not olive oil, but um, the fact that it's cold pressed and you can heat it to high temperatures without it deconfiguring is good, so it comes into the coconut oil sort of land of, land of living. Right. Season your meat, always season your meat before, um, before um, you start frying it off, okay? So meat does need flavour. Right. I feel it's another swig of coffee time. I can feel I'm on an adrenaline buzz. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> right, now back into the um, frying pan. Okay, so I'll just, yeah, can you hear that sizzle? So that's important when the meat goes in. Not really the most two bits, but hey ho. Um, I'm going to shove them in the side here. Right, I'm going to clean the board. going on in this kitchen now, which is very lovely, so I'm going to have to shout a lot. Now, let's actually get a couple more things done, okay, I'm going to put my um, laptop down underneath here, and we're just going to round it off a couple of these things, so the cauliflower puree, oh, look here, actually, I'm going to use this machine a couple of times and therefore I will do one job first in it. So actually, let us come to this tray here, which I can't see. So I bought up, I said to the lovely butch this morning, I said, okay, I need a big piece of um, shoulder of pork for stone roasting. So he turned around and went away, got a piece. And it didn't have a bone in it. And, and of course, people don't buy meat with bones in it because they don't tend to realise that how much better... Gosh, that's noise, isn't it? They don't have realised how much better meat is when it's cooked on the bone. And so he, he said, oh, it's fine. And then he rushed off around the back, came out with a whole shoulder of pork. Oh, I love a whole shoulder of pork. I mean, you just wipe up my just, You know, I wanted to cook the whole thing, but, you know, it might just be... This tomorrow. I'm hoping it might be a party, but the lovely thing is, if we're getting this pulled pork, will freeze really well, it will be there for several days, and we will all actually love it. So, anyway, he got me a whole shoulder, and we cut it in half, and I took the large half. So, a whole shoulder is around nine kilos, a bit smaller, a bit larger. So, this is about four kilos, four, four and a half kilos. 
Look at this lovely thing. Really lovely thing. Right, one more glance of my... What's going on over here? You know, I'm always slightly new, which is, I mean, I must, must have, they say you want to store it, and they do, but they never do it how I wish it to be done. So, we need, everybody needs a Stanley knife in their kitchen. I haven't opened this for a while. Oh, blimey. Oh, no, there we go. There we go, press down push, okay? So make sure you've got a set of clean blades because, let me show you what I mean. So, what, what we've got here is the slices across the middle. I'm sorry, I'm doing two screens here. Um, and I want it to go off the end. I want it to cut through the end, you know? And then I want some slices down because then the crafting, when, you, um, when you're serving it, it's easy to serve. So I must have a word with you about that. Um, but I was chatting so much that I didn't. Right, so my standing knife is now going to just finish off doing this job really, really well. So, make sure you... It's a kitchen Stanley knife, so, you know, you could... If somebody wants to give you a present tomorrow, if you're a mum, that is, then, you know, how about that? I'd like a kitchen Stanley knife, please. There we go, right, now, nearly done. So it's a quick process if you have the tool. If you don't have the tool, you'll then discover probably that your kitchen knives are way too blunt to do it. That is another story. Right, I'm now going to do some slices down in the opposite direction. Four sets, right the way through that skin. Right. Now, fill up that hole. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I've missed, I've missed a bit. So can you see there? Look, I've got to do it again, but in the middle. But can you see? We've got... That's what I'm after. Right. Okay, and the other thing is when you do that, the flavour is going to get right down into the meat. Which is what I want. Right, so... So this enormous beast here is for tomorrow. This is for my, um, this is for Mothering Sunday. And this is going to go into the oven tonight. And I'm going to blast it in the oven at about 200 for about 40 minutes. And then I'm going to turn the oven right down to about 100. Well, in fact, it's going to be in the slow oven of the Arga the simmering oven, but my oven will go into sort of slumber overnight, so it'll drop right down. And this will be ready for, you know, um, any time, any time. It'll be ready from sort of lunchtime tomorrow um, until six o'clock or when we want it. But when it's ready, we'll know because it will fall off. It'll just, it will just fall apart. And if it's ready early, it's fine. You take it out of the oven and you just leave it on the side. You can put it back in a hot oven to blast it up to temperature. Now, um, Nigella does a really good recipe for this. So if you want a recipe for this in detail, follow Nigella. But I'm just going to take the hassle and pain out of it. So I actually want a nice big bowl. Because this is going to sit with all this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in there. Oh, what an amazing piece of meat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fantastic garlic and kind of chilli Paste. Well, I'm not going to paste. I've got a huge great thing of garlic here. And I'm going to whiz it all up in my food processor. So I'm just going to crush the garlic to take the, um, to take the skins off. Another reason for knowing how to use a nice big chopping knife. Skins off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. They just pop out. Okay, here we go. We're nearly there. 
and then I'm just going to whiz these up. Now you don't have to do this, but this is just a little something to make it a little bit more exciting and special. Because pulled pork, you know, pork is divine, but it, you know, it's got a lot of fat in it, which is great for us. Um, little top tip here, camels, hugs, are not full of water, they're full of fat. When you're on a paleo keto diet, you don't need as much water because your fat is stored in the water. Little top tip here from Dr. Sarah Myhill. I watched an amazing lecture on Thursday night about cancer. I have a lot to say about it. Sarah Myhill does not pertain to be the guru on cancer, but she spent whole Christmas doing massive amount of research from the top gurus. And there is an amazing document on her website, Dr. Sarah Myhill. So if you have cancer, if you know anybody who has cancer, please empower them. Cancer is not, there is not one toolkit to sort it. It's a whole spectrum. So you need the support, obviously, the amazing support from the medical teams, but there is a whole picture. You need to uh, uh, look at it from every angle and we all have cancer in us. It's dormant until it comes alive because our immune systems are compromised for all sorts of reasons. So. Enough about that subject. Right, so garlic in here. Now, and raw apple cider vinegar. Vinegar in your life is great. So really lovely, good splash of that. That's probably about 100 mils if you're liking measurements. I love chipotle chili flakes, or you could do chopped fresh chili, or just ordinary. I'm gonna plonk a few of those in there. I love the smokiness of chipotle, and that's really great. Now, olive oil, this is gonna race slow. So olive oil. I'm just going to use my basic one for this. No, actually, I'm going to use this lovely camelina oil. That's what I've got it out for. And splash in a back in there. And we need seasoning. So, yeah, lots of black pepper going in there. A little bit of salt. So, basically, when I cook this, I will cook it skin side down. So, this fat side down, trapped side underneath. And it will cook in the oven like that and all the fat will melt down and then at the end when it's done i will turn it back over and blast it back in a hot oven and that crackling will crackle up or the fat will crackle up and it will be done so that is in a nutshell the process but let's with this and that's all looking good so it's good I took it down a notch. Now this, 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 it's going in this bowl so I just want it to go everywhere. Now I haven't looked this up but this spatula which is amazing and comes from the company called the Path Check which many of you will recognise and have some bits in your kitchen. So you can buy Pampi Chef stuff in Canada, America and Germany. You can buy this on Amazon in Canada. And what I've not done is plugged in Amazon CA to find them, to see whether you can get them shipped to the UK. I don't know, but I do have a very good friend there who lives in Canada. So their new ones are getting closer to me. Oh, look at this. Absolutely young. So this, it's going to sit in this, and when Josie comes down in due course at, well, it'll be 12 o'clock right now, um, then um, she will, um, I think she'll be quite pleased. Because a sneaky suspicion, somebody says that she might be doing a, a dinner, a lunch for me, which would be really lovely, wouldn't it? But anyway. Anyway, right. Ha. Oh. That is divine. So I'll pop that there and take a picture of it, but you know, that is, I mean, that, that is lunch done for tomorrow. So it goes in the oven and it's just done. Right, so that is that. Now, let's come back to the cauliflower. So this was for supper tonight. So the cauliflower goes in there. You know, there are some leaves in there as well, and that is absolutely fine too. I don't know why I just threw it away. You can eat, you can drink the veg water. 
I mean, why wouldn't you? Because <laughs> they're drinking coffee. <laughs> Right, okay, so we're just going to puree that. Now, I have got some amazing um, olive oil, cold-pressed artisan made by, and it comes from Puglia in Italy, uh, Puglia, I don't know, I'm not Italian, and by um, Kerry and um, Jane Smitherman, some local friends who planted their um, olives about, I think, I'm not sure how many years ago. They've been working, they go over to Italy every summer for a long time, and they have been tending these, as James said, we're never going to make any money out of it, but since I haven't been able to get the lovely Mesto, it was an absolute joy to get a mess, an email from Kelly um, about this. So, um, olive oil puglia at gmail.com. You can all do that. Olive oil puglia at gmail.com. I'll try and put it in the show notes. I will leave it out until so I put it in the show notes. Right, so you need a really good dose of that. And maybe, apart from seasoning, that is all we need. But sometimes I put in a little bit of plant milk as well. But, you know, be generous with your olive oil because it's raw and it's delicious. And if you weren't putting olive oil in, you'd be putting in double cream and butter. So go for it, guys. Don't be, um, don't be, don't be miserly. Right. Oh my goodness. Now that's quite a thick puree at this moment in time, and it's not that smooth, but let's have a little look and see what's going on. So that's looking like that. So want to take it a bit further. Now if you've got you know, a Vitamix, you could do it in that and you'd have instant puree, but I'm just sticking to what um, most people would have. I do hope you've got, got machines on your radar or in your kitchen. You know, it's a joy to me to go to somebody's home and to discover equipment that they've got hiding that's never been used and bring it out and get them loving it again. Right. That's enough noise. Well, that's just coming together. So I'll taste it and decide what it needs. Remember, you've always got to taste your food. Mm. I'm going to whiz that a bit more. That's creamy, love it. So I'm going to whiz it a bit more and get it really, really creamy. A bit more salt. Well, it's just lovely. I mean, and it's going to be just like mashed potato, but not. So that is done. The pork is done. Let's just come back to the ragu. So here we go. Oh, I'm going to hot hands. I'll just show you. Here we go. So one day I'll have a cameraman. I'll have a crew. You know, I'll have a makeup crew. I'll have a hair crew. I'll have somebody whizzing in. But, you know, I love it. It's just me because I don't have to look after anybody else. I can just have fun. So, um, so that is that, and then in is going to go the um, browned, um, do you know, this could do with a little, oh, she's going to have, oh, do you know, it's Saturday, chuck it in. Now, I'm going to deglaze that pan, because it's got some lovely juices at the bottom, with my chicken stock, And then that's just going to go into the oven with the lid on and just do its thing quietly during the day. I have an Argo, so it'll be in the simmering oven, so that's 150, but you can put this in a slow cooker, but loaf, you can have this on a hob. I would have it on my ceramic hob at number two, lid on and just let it gently, gently, gently do its thing. Long and slow is the name of the game. And you know, we're doing this on Saturday morning, so it's there for supper and we can go and have a lovely day. And it doesn't matter whether it's going to be two hours or four hours, you're just, it's going to be fine, which anyway, so it's a really user friendly thing. And we're going to have incredible dinner, incredible lunch tomorrow, whether it's lunch, supper, tea, God knows what. And I think it's just all going to be good. So I'm just looking around me now. The only thing I can see here is that sage. Now I brought this amazing sage back from Norfolk and deep fried sage leaves are a most delicious thing. So if you've got sage in the garden, you just, Get a little saucepan, put, I don't know, a centimetre of oil in the bottom, your best oil possible, so olive oil if you can. Good quality olive oil that you can raise temperature, or I could actually use try with some of this camelina oil, and you just <coughs> fry them, you make little sage crisps, and they are divine, they are divine, absolutely divine. Um, sage, herb, medicinal, marvellous. So, my goodness, it's 10 to 12. Well, I was excited, thrilled to be back with you all, Thank you for watching. Do post in your comments. Have an amazing Mothering Sunday tomorrow. It doesn't matter whether you're a mother or not. We all look after people and that is mothering, whether you're male, female, 
it, her, them, all of you, all of you, I love you all, and um, I will see you next week. Comments good, useful about the timing, because, um, you know, it's getting lighter in the mornings, and I can do my big dog walk afterwards, so, or actually just start going out early. So, over to you, but I love feedback on that, so see you soon. Bye!